Things Motoring is owned and brought to you by Change Cars, South Africa's trusted online vehicle platform. Whether you're looking to buy, sell or just need advice, visit changecars.co.za. This is not a show about sport, cooking or gardening. It's about motoring, all things motoring. What an apt name, guys. That's what we're gonna call the show, all things motoring. Let me go get changed, I'll see you inside. Hi, allow me to introduce myself. You've seen me play tennis, clearly not my forte. My name is Michael Pashut, I'm the owner of the online vehicle platform changecars.co.za. With over 30 years in the motor industry, and a real passion for all things motoring. We'll be taking you behind the scenes to see how it's really done. We'll be giving you access to people that are usually behind closed doors, giving you, our viewer, insight into cars, bikes, boats, and truth be told, anything that has wheels. And that's what this show is about. If you have an idea or a suggestion, please share it with us, even if you'd like to be on the show. Info at allthingsmotoring.co.za. Time to get straight into the show. Coming up this week on All Things Motoring, we speak to the team at Audi Ravonia in Johannesburg, where we talk all things Audi race pedigree, new releases, and the history of the brand. Then we take a trip back in time to the James Hall Museum of Transport. Today we're at the magnificent showroom of Audi Centre Ravonia, part of the incredibly well-respected Hatfield Group. And with me I have the pleasure of having Ryan, the dealer principal. Ryan, appreciate you having us here. Good morning, Mark. What an incredible showroom. I've been walking around. Am I correct in saying to start, you are one of the select Audi Sport dealerships uh, in Gauteng? That's correct, Mark. We are one of a limited number of Audi Sport dealers and we've also got the limited e-tron franchise. I cannot wait to tell our viewers about the new e-tron. I think this is a product that is truly going to take South African market by storm. I, I mean, it's been a long time coming. All the dealerships uh, in the group fully geared up for it? Yes, absolutely. We have actually got one of the fastest charging stations outside here, 75 kilowatt charger, upgradable to 150 kilowatt, which means we're going to be the fastest charging Audi dealership in Gauteng. It is not just said with pride. That is an absolute statement of fact. Afterwards, we're going to walk around and you're going to see why this is possibly the premier showroom in uh, Johannesburg. Tell us a little bit about your product. So if I can say for our viewers, let's go from entry level, working up. Look, I think Audi's got something for everyone. I think we start at the A1 range and we work our way all the way up to the RS GT uh, e-tron. There's no question that Audi is an absolute top premier brand, sure. but you indicated you've got something for everybody. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you've got, you've got the A1, you've got the A3 and A4, and then we're finding a lot of traction in our SUV segment, which is Q2, Q3, Q5. I think Audi's really have been pioneering uh, uh, that market. Um, but yes, certainly we've got something for you. I wish that the RS Q8 could come in at about 300,000 Rand. I swear, yes. that would be a great Absolutely. setup. Is that not the most magnificent? It really is. And just to listen to the tone on that car, um, it's something else. It just gives you tingles up the uh, back of your neck. I think what's very interesting w when you talk about sound when it comes to cars, the founder of Audi was a guy called August Hoch. Hoch is German for here. 
or listen. He lost the rights to his own name when he started wow. the company in 1899 and then translated it into Latin, which is obviously Audi. And I think when you look at it from that point of view, when you hear the engine start, you can understand how that element really gets revs your engine. Yeah. The Audi history is as long as it's uh, German rivals, but a little bit more complicated. Sure. Am I correct in sure. saying DKW, then Auto Union, around 1965, the Audi brand as we know it today was uh, what we are dealing with? So in fact, Audi, if you look at the four rings, it symbolizes the union of the four companies back in, I think it was the 30s. Um, Correct, 1932. Yeah, uh, it was DKW, Hoch, Wanderer and Audi combined to form Auto Audi, union. yes, Auto Union. Correct. And Auto Union merged with NSU and then they eventually came up with Audi. So it's quite a storied history, absolutely. Now, when people talk about the history of Audi, Ingolstadt? That is where the brand is headquartered yes. today. Am I correct? Correct. Somebody like yourself ever been over to... Uh... I've been very fortunate, yes. I've been a number of times to see the factory and it really is incredible. You can eat on the factory floors. You must be wondering why I'm asking you. I'm just asking, will I get an invite to go over to Ingolstadt? Absolutely. Another R8, absolutely. And it's very interesting, I must tell you, when you, uh, you can actually order your car directly from the factory. So if you're living in Germany, you can actually go and collect your vehicle off the production line and... Uh, is it true that they charge you more to go fetch it from the production line? Yes, yes, there is. It, it, that that is, is incredible. I'm not sure so the are they is, saying yes. so? It's the absolute privilege of yes. coming to our wonderful factory, Correct. being handed the keys by the technician who exactly. essentially f did the final quality QC on it. Correct. Amazing. Yeah. But that must be an incredible experience. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely. It is. My earliest memories of Audi are it's one of the brands that you can actually associate words with. So I think of Quattro. Absolutely, it's Audi. Fuhrsprung durch Technik. Absolutely Audi. Yourself, if I may ask, what are your earliest memories? Well, I think it also goes back to Quattro. I think I was 13. My uncle took me for a drive in his S2. I just remember that turbo boost and the Quattro and the handling. It was just something. Was oh, that car like blipping and beeping and making that uh, like fire burning sound? Uh, with the dump valve going, yes, yeah. absolutely. It was, it was uh, a sensory experience. Thoroughly enjoyed. If he still has it, I'll be prepared to buy it from him. I'm sure. I'm sure you would. Yes, they're very highly sought I mean, after. What yeah. would something like that be worth today uh, if you could well, find uh, it in uh, the market? What Whatever Audi. somebody's prepared to pay? Uh, that's exactly it. A car's worth what someone's prepared to pay for it. Absolutely. Audi itself has got an incredible motorsport tradition. For anyone who follows motorsport, um, they will see what an incredible tradition. If you take between 2000 and 2015, Audi won the Le Mans 24 hours, 13 out of 15 times. Is that something that the brand is incredibly proud of Look, at this are, level? We are proud of it and I think uh, it's also reflected in our recent achievements in the Dakar. I think is uh, quite interesting. Um, but yeah, Quattro really revolutionised uh, our rally performances, um, our 24 hour and also our electric 24 hour racing is doing incredibly well at the moment. Yeah. As a brand, we're incredibly proud of it. Anybody at the dealership here that focuses specifically on motorsport? I would recommend Christy. She is fabulous. She is so passionate about the brand, Audi Motorsport. I think you'll really enjoy Look it. Look forward to having a word with her. Thanks. Ryan, appreciate all your time that you've Welcome given us. Guys. Change cars. There's no safer online vehicle platform in South Africa. Hello. Welcome to the James Hall Museum of Motoring. That's my job. Sorry. Then best you lead the way. James Hall Transport Museum opened in 1964 in collaboration with the City Council. A wonderful museum where visitors young and old will find something that will fascinate and resonate with them. This is clearly where it's at. Sharon, you are the front line. Yes. I walk in. In fact, I was standing my, in your position and you told me you're in charge. Right. Tell me what you do here on a daily basis. I'm a museum guide. I welcome school kids. I'm, I welcome everyone that walks into the museum. And especially with young kids, they're very excited. Some haven't heard about the museum, especially with old people as well. So who's got a bigger spell? Young kids or older people? Children. 
Are you sure about that? Yes. What about the 70 year olds that come here and say, I used to own that. I used to own that. That's what I remember growing up. Okay, we do find them. There is some older guys in the museum right now walking around and the, you know, the uncle was saying, you know what, I've been on the farm. He was, you know, he was explaining about yeah. the farm and what they had on the farm. The buses especially that went around town. What is so clear for me walking around is there's an energy, there's a pride, yes. there's a passion. Yeah. This museum means a lot to the people involved with it. When it comes to horsepower, you have a choice. You have horsepower or you have kilowatts. When last were you privileged enough to see a classic, beautiful green Mercedes like that? A red Porsche, even a beautiful parking meter. Look at this incredible white Opel Cadet. Not to mention the classic love bug. These are incredible, incredible classics we're looking at. It really does take a team of passionate staff to keep this collection looking so pristine. We spoke to Mandla to see what it takes to keep this collection looking so beautiful. I'm with Mandla Nkomo, assistant curator at the museum. Mandla has been with the museum how many years? For almost 18 years now. Incredible. Now, as I said, I've been walking around for an hour. Share with our viewers, how many pieces are there in this museum, roughly? Roughly more than 3,000 pieces. I don't think people understand just how much uh, is here to see. The categories, what have we got here to show our viewers? Okay, when you get into the museum, the first place you will get to is the animal transport, which is where transport started. And then we have got our early motoring uh, section, and then we've got our steam vehicles enclosure, we've got our bicycles, we've got a car hall, which has got a lot of cars, and we've got uh, emergency vehicles, uh, buses, trains, trams, and a whole broad spectrum of mainly transport, uh, land transport items. What is very clear, whether you're young, old, in between, older, there's something here that's going to interest you. Yourself personally, what is your favorite piece here? Well, my favorite piece will be the two Mortal T's. I love Mortal T's for some reason. I'm not sure why, but... <laughs> Do you remember the joke about a Model T4? They said you can have it in any color, as yeah. long as it's... Black. 100%. In his autobiography, Ford reported that in 1909, he told his management team, any customer can have a car painted any color he wants as long as it's black. It is generally regarded as the first affordable automobile which made car travel available to middle-class Americans. The relatively low price was the result of Ford's efficient fabrication of components, running an assembly line instead of producing expensive individual handcrafted vehicles. The Ford Model T was named the most influential car of the 20th century in 1999 Car of the Century competition, ahead of the Mini, Citroen DS and Volkswagen Beetle. Ford's Model T was successful not only because it provided inexpensive transportation on a massive scale, but also because the car signified innovation for the rising middle class and became a powerful symbol of the United States age of modernization. There's one car that takes you anywhere you want to go. The Model T. Strong, sturdy, with a will of its own. We're standing in an incredible area of the museum, focusing on firefighting equipment, safety equipment, ambulances, etc. Mandla, I'm in awe looking at this old stuff. Tell us a little bit about it. Mike, this is one of our prides, uh, the emergency vehicle section. Obviously, we've got uh, about eight fire engines here and uh, an ambulance. The oldest that uh, we have, the oldest, is a water pump that was used as a firefighting device, which is an 1877 water cut. 1877, yes. that is incredible. That water cut was brought by the British to South Africa as a water to carry water around. And then during the Battle of San Juan, it was taken in by the Zulu and they, they, they captured it and they took it. And then after a while it was recovered and then Johannesburg, the city of Johannesburg used it as a firefighting water cut. So you dragged it along, the, uh, along with you to the fire and then when you got there you pump the water to spray water so that you can put out the fire. 
Amazing. Looking at these wonderful pieces of equipment, the equipment that stopped our cities burning down, it seems like most of them were made in uh, England. You see the London logos on them. Tell us a little bit about that. Most of the fire engines, uh, firefighting equipment was imported from uh, uh, British imports. So because obviously we were a British colony, so all of, most of our stuff came from them. So like the Meriwether uh, fire engine that I have on the left, which has got a steam pump, which basically the steam pump is to pressurize the water to, to spray the water. Incredible. Can you imagine the process that went into procuring the equipment, getting it over to South Africa? This would have come over on a ship. Probably took six months to get from uh, the UK to South Africa. Yeah, it will take a long while because you then uh, had to order from uh, whichever company you are ordering from and then uh, then sometimes they will uh, custom make those uh, equipment for South Africa because uh, South African weather and South African conditions are quite different from the English, uh, British sort of uh, of course. Uh, conditions. What I'm so excited about, it's every boy's dream to drive a fire truck. Can we go take one of these for a test drive? Okay, Mike, let's go save our city. I'm right behind you, Fire Chief. As a huge fan of the Audi brand, I believe they now have got something with a little bit more power than this in the two-door range. I'm keen to see what it is. As a petrol head, it's amazing to know that there are people in this country and around the world who spend so much time and effort to make sure collections like these are around for us and future generations to enjoy. After the break, we're going to be speaking to Christy, all things Audi Motorsport. Change cars. There's no safer online vehicle platform in South Africa. I'm here speaking with Christy and Jerry upstairs. Earlier I was speaking to Ryan about the motorsport heritage of Audi and I think that for me was my earliest memory seeing that 1981 Audi Quattro, Quattro for me it's always been synonymous with Audi. Yourself, how much do you know about the motorsport heritage of Audi? Well, I'm absolutely inspired by the motorsport heritage of Audi. Um, as we all know, Michelle Mouton actually raced and she's one of the very few females who have succeeded so early in, in rallying. Along with uh, the Quattro and the Rally, we obviously competed in Le Mans, which was the introduction of our diesel engines as well. All of our technology in our current model range has been developed in racing at some point. Our Quattro is now in almost all of our cars, aside from the Q2 and the A1 for the South African market. All of our technology that we've developed throughout the racing history of Audi has is, is been trickled into our, our new vehicle sales. You always hear manufacturers talk about the racing heritage, and yeah, really is a case in point. Everything that we see in modern cars is from a racing uh, pedigree. The Quattro all-wheel drive system. You spoke about Le Mans. Audi won 13 times out of 15 between 2000 and 2014. They were literally unbeatable. And that's not unbeatable against nobodies. That's unbeatable against your Ferraris, Porsche, Bentley, Jaguar, all the big names of motorsport. Getting back to motorsport, Christy, you think I'm fixated about it? Tell us a little bit about the Dakar and the e-tron system that is uh, really the buzzword at the moment. So our electric cars, which you'll see all over our floor currently, and we've recently launched them in Cape Town. Um, we launched the first full electric to compete in the Dakar. So we had exceptional success this year with the Dakar with a full electric RSQ e-tron. Um, we had three cars competing, all of them did exceptionally well, the teamwork was also, I mean the whole experience was just beautiful to watch um, and it is the first full electric to compete at that level, uh, off-road especially. With regards to our current cars, you'll see the technology mirroring in the options that we offer here. We've got the Sportback S right to, and if we have a look at all of that technology that's continuously being brought through and developed 
uh, if the car can do the Dakar 100%, it can handle everyday life. I, I'm just uh, intrigued. Where were the electric charging stations in the middle of the desert? Or did you have your backup trucks doing that? <laughs> I take it they weren't in the middle of the desert. So no, there's no, there's no speed charges, unfortunately, in the middle of the desert. Everything is calculated uh, mathematically. Uh, we look at the uh, situation today, we need to adapt. Yes, we had uh, combustion engines, which are gonna be running out. Talking about electricity, uh, our global is under constant threat. Uh, talking about technology, uh, we're not only looking at fashion, or the ease of change. We're looking at a reasonable solution to our everyday life. Our climate is under threat. So, so we, we need to come up with something that's a solution. And electric cars are the answer today. Realistically, maybe not 10 years or 15 years, but 30 years from now, you won't have anything that is not electric. You're not gonna have, you're not gonna have petrol powered uh, vehicles. So from 2033, you won't be able to buy a new Audi with a nice engine. Really? That is, that is incredible. Well, it's a promise they've made. Yeah. Um, so from 2033, they're going to stop production on, on the ICE engines. Now, talking about a new uh, vehicle, I come in, I want to buy a new car. It's not a case of one size fits all. Jerry, when I see the product range, for me, it feels like there is something for everybody in the Audi range. Sure, Michael. Audi have a vehicle for every purpose, with style and power to match for your small city car, right through to our flagship RS8. The models are based on letters and numbers. A represents your car, Q represents your SUV, R and RS are your sports models. Then the numbers go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. The higher the number, the bigger the vehicle. Finally, we have the engine badge, for example, TFSI for petrol, TDI for diesel, and coming soon, e-tron for electric cars. Jerry, thank you so much. After walking around, as I said, you can see that there is a model for every single need. Jerry, you've given us a product range. I come in, I'm a new car buyer. It's not a case of one size fits all. Right. I want to choose my color, I want to choose my interior, the wheels, the dashboard fit and finish. Is that possible? 100%. That's exclusivity. We do have a department that specializes in customization so that you feel that uh, you don't have the same car everybody has. You've got your own one. I've always been an Audi fan. After spending the morning here, I can say I'm an even bigger fan. Wonderful dealership, wonderful people, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Hi, allow me to introduce myself. If I could remember my name, I would. <laughs> oh, come on, no, okay. Hi, allow me to introduce myself. I'm all things motoring. Should I say, allow me to introduce myself? Allow me to introduce myself. Where's the, where's the position? Another step forward. It's important that I mention. That nailed it. That's what the one I want. Sorry, I didn't press record. <laughs> Next week on All Things Motoring, we go back in time again to the Transport Museum. We speak to Sandile from Audi about customization and the many colors, fabrics, and accessory options when it comes to customizing new cars. Then we head down to KZN to meet new friends and see a real passion project in the making. Things Motoring is owned and brought to you by Change Cars, the platform buyers trust with good reason. Change Cars works exclusively with the best manufacturer approved dealerships. There's no safer online vehicle platform in South Africa.